For those who will, Jesus said in the Bible, he who has an ear, let him hear. He who has an eye, let him see. It is what it is, man. Jail is for suckers. This is Erla on the latest of What's Poppin'. We are here on 21st and Hunton Park with 38-year-old Michael Taban, who has previously done 10 years in prison, has decided to go back to jail in a cell of his own making. He will be here throughout the month of February in protest of violence and youth imprisonment. Let's take it to Taban himself to find out more of his initiative against violence. And so what I'm trying to do is give the young people a chance to see jail before they have to be jail for real. Okay, I'm sitting here with Michael Tavon, and he's going to talk to us a little bit more about his initiative. So Tavon, why did you choose this approach to bring awareness of violence and youth imprisonment? Really just because it seems like nothing else works. I mean, we, we live in a generation where they need to see and feel the real. So what I, what, what, what I tried to do with my team was make it as real as possible. This is how, how a jail is almost really laid out. I really did the time. We got some real paperwork from the jail. We got the real rules we give to the kids. You know what I mean? They say keep it real. So we keeping it real. Well, we from the hood. You know what I mean? So this is, you know, we just wanted to give kids the chance to see jail before they have to go be jailed for real and find out for themselves why jail is for suckers. So doing this here, taking a stand, is something that you want the young to see, to say that, well, Dag, if this is what, I call him RZA, y'all say Taban, if this is what RZA is doing to show this is what's going on in prison, then maybe we need to straighten up, because this is really what's going on in prison. So why did you choose this area, particularly behind, um, well, in front of um, a mural in dedication of those who were um, victims of violence? Well, first of all, it's because this is like, you know, everybody always say if you do crime, you got two ways to go, jail and death. What better way than 406 ancestors on my back? telling you the stories. My nephew up there, Brian, Brian uh, Motley up there on the mirror, and I just come down to say, you know, Tabaj, what he's doing is a beautiful thing, and wish him well with this, you know what I mean? Because, you know, they need to stop the violence, you know? Do you think that his initiative will be effective? Yes, yes, I hope so. I hope, I hope we can grab onto it right here in Philadelphia. Start here, you know what I mean? He's here. Start right here, you know what I mean? Stop the violence here. Death is something that everybody got to do, but everybody don't have to die prematurely. You know, people out here die before their grandparents, and that's wrong. You feel me? So now the streets are standing up, the people who created the problem. Gangster law. And we're not talking about gangster as far as Al Capone and... You know, we're talking about real dudes that stand up back in the day that was doing gangster stuff that's no longer on that. We're known and remembered as what we used Ain't to do. Ain't nobody stood up since since King and them back in the day. Ain't nobody really, you know, from the from the grassroots level, you know, really stand up to make a powerful statement from the street. Especially, I think it's unheard of that the thugs, the people who created the problem, are standing up. So this is news, newsworthy. Do you feel like if you chose a different area, such as um, a suburban area, predominantly um, white area, do you think that you would have gotten more media attention or do you think it would have um, questioned the message? Like, what do you think about that? Wow, wow, that's the first time in all these questions I asked that somebody asked me that. I mean, it, of course it would have. And they, they, they either, they, you know, because a lot of times certain areas don't deal with certain things, they might have possibly shut me down like we don't we don't want you here you know what i'm saying so you're probably right they, you know what i mean it probably wouldn't have got the same time either they got a big attention or they'd have shut it down commissioner ramsey came out here bringing kids and things with him it's important people should know there's, there's been a statement that's been going on in prison since the 60s that jail is for suckers you know the older guys usually tell that to the younger guys that got a chance to get back out to, to try to deter them from coming back. So, you know, what we did was we took the statement jail is for suckers and we bring it to the street. That's how you want to live, man, because you got to understand there's consequences and repercussions for everything you do, man. This is what you leave the street. If you like girls, ain't no girls in prison. You got dudes in there, though, that are, uh, 
got to take a uh, a bag of M&Ms and dip in them some water and make some lipstick and some eyeshadow if that's what you want to. You know what I mean? You know, jail is for suckers, man. Like, I, we can't make it no plainer. Everybody telling you the same thing. The police, the counselor, you know, the, the, the ex-convict, the convict, the streets, we all telling y'all, man, young boys, y'all moving too fast. Young girls, slow down, man. Live a little bit. The faster you live, the faster you die, man. It's not a game. Well, what I'm trying to achieve, basically, is, is awareness. You know, they say knowledge is power, but I disagree. I believe that the application of knowledge is power. And that's a G law. They say jail is for suckers. Yeah. You heard him say it again. Go up to that camera and point in the camera. Say jail is for suckers. Jail is for suckers. Jail is for suckers. You heard it. Even the kids know. Jail for suckers.